Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by one half of the Money Podcast, How to Money. He's on a mission to give you unbiased, jargon-free financial guidance. We welcome money saver, Joel Larsgaard. Hey, Sean, thanks for having me, man. Joel, let's go beyond the mic. Your podcast has been downloaded more than 20 million times. You've produced Clark Howard. How has your family's own financial troubles growing up forced you to become a saver sooner than later? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, people, how they view money, so much of it is largely determined by how they grew up. And for me personally, my parents fought about money a lot in my early years. And then they eventually declared bankruptcy when I was, when I was 12. And I still remember that my parents said, Hey, like at some point this car, our car is going to be repossessed. They bought a brand new car that they couldn't afford and they declared bankruptcy. And so the car had to go, but we didn't know when it was going to go. And so one day overnight, it was gone. We walked out the next morning and that car was not in the driveway any longer. And so that had just a major impact on how I think about money. I was like, listen, I don't want to fight about money with my spouse. I want to be so good with money that it's not going to cause any any pressure in my marriage, any, any arguments. And I want to be so frugal <laughs> that I am buying myself my own freedom and handling money well can do that uh, for a person. So I just resolved at that at that age, at the young age of 12, like, this isn't going to be my story, but yeah, it had an indelible impact. And it's really, I think why largely why I do what I do today. What's the hardest lesson people need to learn with money? Well, I think especially now it, it we're, we're so tempted to spend everything that comes in. And the reality is, and it, it, Instagram makes it easier than ever, right? You click a tab and it, they will literally show you a feed of awesome stuff that they think you want to buy. And the reality is you probably do want to buy all that stuff because they know you better than you know yourself. And so you're like, well, cool. Yeah, we'll we get that new ball cap or that the new pair of sneakers because, I mean, I'm going to look fly, right? But uh, the truth is that we have a spending problem. And it's, it's some people have an income problem. They're, that, that's part of the equation too. But we have a spending problem in this country. And everything is conspiring against us to get us to spend more than we, more than we have. And so we have to become more disciplined. But we also have to learn the ropes on how to save effectively. And so, yeah, we could all use uh, a dose of frugality a little bit more. And, um, and we have to develop systems that can help us to, to not spend our money. Like I was just with my daughter at Costco the other day, she saw this squishy mellow pillow and she's like, I really want this dad. And I'm like, yeah, it's cool. It's cute. You have a million stuffed animals. How about this? 48 hours. You've got the money and it's your money and you can spend it how you want, but let's do the 48 hour rule. I will bring you back here if you still want this 48 hours from now. And we could all stand to do that for ourselves, right? Instead of just adding to cart and, and buying the item, getting it shipped to our house, like, Institute a rule where you don't spend until uh, until 48 hours after the impulse uh, occurs, because then you know, okay, this is something I really want, and it fits into my budget. And if it and, and you might the, the reality is a lot of the things that you wanted in the moment, you're probably going to forget about 48 hours later. Joel, do you remember your first beer and where you had it? Oh, I don't know if I do remember. Yes, actually, okay. So it was I, I think I was uh, 19 years old at college. Illegal. Sorry about that. Uh, and with uh, with a buddy, I think it was a Coors Light. So I've, my beer tastes have come a long way since then. Money saver. One half of the Money Podcast. How to money. Joel Larsgaard joins us beyond the mic. And Joel, it's time for the Rocking Eight. Eight random questions. Answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. There is no pressure. Okay. What's one thing you always splurge on? Craft beer. The last gift you you gave to your daughters. A swing set. Episode one of How to Money was about your love of biking. So what's the longest you've rode your bike? So I usually use it for point A to B transportation. So probably a 10-mile bike ride around town. Now, I've heard you block people at conventions. (laughs) So how tall are you? Six foot six. One people always under budget. Oh, grocery store, especially these days with inflation. Will the Braves win the World Series this year? Of course. Yeah, back to back. It's going to happen. Are you sure about that? Uh. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the team's coming together at the right time. Favorite thing to barbecue? I like to smoke pork butt. Joel, what's the best disc golf course you've ever played at? Where is it? Oh, so I haven't gotten around to too many parts of the country to play. Probably Portland, Oregon. There's there's some really great courses in the Portland, Seattle area. Now, how has your advice changed from saveoutsidethebox.com to today? Yeah, it's evolved quite a bit. So Save Outside the Box was when I was fresh. I was starting. I was getting my thoughts down. They weren't cohesive. And the podcast now over time has really, we have like a cohesive message that comes across every single episode, I hope. So yeah, it's, it's definitely evolved. My financial thinking is involved and just kind of the ways 
that I think about like what it takes to reach people and give them the advice they need that they're actually going to use. It's time for one big question. Joel Larsgaard, one half of the money podcast, how to money be on the mic. Joel, you're on the board of your kids charter school. Why is education important for you, for your kids and for others? Yeah. I mean, the, the reality is we have the ability as humans to transmit information to other people that they didn't have. And the more that we can do that, as opposed to learning the hard way, the more quickly I think that we can, that we can prosper in our own lives. And so when we think we, we also have the ability to lose that information. Like we can, we can fail to transfer the proper information and we can lose the ability to do something. I remember Elon Musk saying that about building, building his, uh, the Falcon rocket. And he's like, we almost lost (laughs) the way, the way to do it. We almost had to reinvent some of how to build a rocket because some of that information had not been transmitted. And so when it comes to education at my kid's, kid's school, I try, try to be very involved in what's happening there. But when it comes to, you know, the education around personal finance, that that, that information, uh, it's crucial for people who have the knowledge to pass it on to others in a way that they can understand. Who is your biggest mentor and who do you want to mentor? Clark Howard was probably my biggest mentor working for him for 15 years. It was the, it was the best mentorship program a guy could have literally working for the goat, (laughs) the best of all time. Um, and yeah, I think more than anything, I want to mentor my kids and I want to be available to their friends, other kids in the neighborhood, but my kids, man, I've got, I've got three, three kids under my roof. They're nine, seven, and three. And so being present for them, uh, mentally and physically, is to me, it's like the greatest gift I can give them. With the How to Money podcast, what are topics people need to be prepared for in the future? Sure. Yeah. So we're about to interview Brian Kelly, who's the points guy, and he talks about travel rewards, how to earn them, how to spend them effectively. And so I'm excited about that one. Another interview we've got coming up is with this incredible entrepreneur. Her name's Cody Sanchez, and she buys small businesses. And there is like a generational opportunity right now to buy other people's businesses and to be successful, to make money. So if you're, and and it's, it doesn't have to cost as much down as you think, like you can buy a business without having a hundred K in your bank account. Um, And so, yeah, that that, I'm excited about those episodes with a lot happening in the economy right now, Friday flights, they are our weekly dive into the new cycle and how they, how what's happening affects your personal finances. I would say those are more important than ever with rate hikes, with inflation. And so, yeah, that's kind of what we're, what we're focused on right now. Got to ask you a money question. Will inflation be curbed within the next two years? I think it's going to take a a long time to really curb it because it was, it was out of control. And, and I think if it happens more quickly, it me it's going to mean more economic pain for people. So the fed's trying to thread this needle. They're trying to get it to where we have what's what they're calling a soft landing uh, in all likelihood. It's going to be, I think it's going to be hard to accomplish, but inflation is going to come down. Um, It's, it's just going to take a little bit of time and uh, we're going to, we're going to have some economic pain in order to make it happen. He loves his wife, Emily, kids, a cold craft beer, smoking pork butt, and helping you save money. From the How to Money podcast, we thank Joel Larsgaard for taking the time to talk with us today. Thanks for having me, Sean. It was a blast. And that, my friends, is a Beyond Mike Shortcut.